So here we go. This right here, the result in the real world is just inverse tangent of x. And we'll put on plus c1 right here. So that's all. And you can also do some tricks up to get from here to here, right? But you know, you can watch my previous, uh, my other video for it. And now, let's see how can we talk about the complex situation. Well, well, we cannot factor one plus x squared as the product of two linear factors in the real world. But if you look at this right here as the integral of one over one minus something squared dx, then we can factor difference of two squares, right? And now we just have to think about what do I need to put on in the parentheses? Of course, I need the x. And I will also invite the i to help me out because i squared is negative 1, negative times negative, that gives me the positive. So wonderful, right? And if you look at the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared du, that's going to be the inverse hyperbolic tangent. So from here, I can just do some u sub and then I'll be able to finish this. So let u equal ix and then du equals i dx and then divide both sides by i so we get dx equals 1 over i du and now of course we take this integral to the u world so we get the integral 1 over 1 minus u square and for the dx is 1 over i let me just put that all the way in the front and then we also have the du like that and you see we have this 1 over i and then this right here, as I said it, is the inverse hyperbolic tangent, like that. And the input is u, and of course u is ix, so I just put down ix right here, and we are done. So I will put down plus c2, because this is the second result. And now you have to remember, when you work on integral, and then maybe you end up with two different looking results, they are equal, but they are off by a constant. So you just have to figure out what the constant is. Sometimes the constant is actually zero, but we actually have to work that out. So let's see, I'm gonna set this to be the same as that. We'll see what happens. So we will see, we will get the original inverse tangent in the real world like this. And then input is x, and then plus c1. We set this equal to be one over i, and we have the inverse hyperbolic tangent of ix uh, plus c2, like that. And of course, when you have C1, C2 right here, you can just kind of get rid of this and get rid of that and just say plus C3 like that, right? Because a constant, you can just minus C1 on both sides. C2 minus C1 is just another constant. So that's pretty much the idea. And now all I'm gonna do is, I will just pick some nice easy X value into all the X. Of course, zero. On the left-hand side, inverse tangent of zero, we get zero and if you put zero right here, the truth is inverse hyperbolic tangent of zero is also zero times one over i is still zero, so you have zero, and you add that c3, so of course you can see that c3 is equal to zero. So the conclusion is that c3 is zero, that means this is the same as that. So I'll write down inverse tangent of x is equal to one over i, and you have the inverse hyperbolic tangent of ix like that. So this is a really cool identity, but you can make it slightly better because maybe you want to multiply both sides by i so that you can isolate this. I'll just put this down for you guys. The inverse hyperbolic of tangent of ix. When you multiply the i to here, you get this is equal to i times the regular, okay, this is the regular inverse tangent and the input is i. Aha, so it's pretty much like you just take out the i, but you change the hyperbolic to the regular situation. So this is one of the really cool identity, right? And you might also be wondering, what if you enter like ix right here into the inverse tangent? Well, let's do it real quick. So I'll put this down in blue so it stands out slightly more. So I'm just going to be plugging ix. So I'll put this right here and there, and we'll see that. On the left-hand side, we get the inverse tangent of ix. And then on the right-hand side, we get 1 over i, and then we have the inverse hyperbolic tangent. And originally, you have this i already, but x is ix now, so it just multiplied by ix like this. Well, well, i times i is 
negative 1. So you have negative x inside. And in fact, the inverse hyperbolic tangent is also an odd function. So you can bring the negative to the front. So you get negative 1 over i. And then the uh, input is just x now. So you get this right here, the inverse hyperbolic tangent of just x right here. And as you guys know, I don't like to be on the bottom. I want to be on the top. So let's multiply the top and bottom by i and i. So altogether right here, you get past the i, and then you have the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x. So in another word, if you plug in i, x into the inverse tangent, the regular version, you can also take out the i, and you still get the inverse hyperbolic though, tangent.